Welcome to Following, a weekly podcast where we will discuss how to follow Jesus. Christianity is not an event you attend, it's a life you live. Join us each week as we dive into the intersection of real life circumstances and the life changing Word of God. Come, follow Jesus with us. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lust, which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may on account of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king as the one in authority, or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God, that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as bondslaves of God. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. First Peter 2, 11-17. All right, welcome back to, to following. Phil, this isn't, first, or this isn't John, so what's, what's going on here? Why are we in First Peter today? Yeah, I uh, occasionally I step out of a series in order to do a commercial sermon or a mm-hmm. commercial series uh, because of the the relevance of 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 the time. You know, if something is going on in the life of the church or um, something going on in the life of the community or the country, that you know, I feel like it's on everyone's heart and mind, and we need to address it from the point of view of the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And I think that the leading up to the election, I think everybody is feeling a lot of angst, a lot of fear, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of concern. Um, and there's some really important things on the ballot, um, you know, not just the presidential election, but even in our own state with the yeah. abortion amendment. So there's a lot of things to think about and talk about from a biblical point of view. And so for the next four weeks at Make an FBC, we're just going to be looking at some key texts that kind of inform our hearts about where we stand biblically mm-hmm. and how we as Christians should be living. And so we began that series with a look at, at First Peter uh, 2 yesterday because Peter is addressing the church living in the midst of a hostile culture and how are we to live, what, what are the habits of our life, what should we be doing um, as we prepare for the end of days. Uh, you know, every, uh, every four years people think that the, the end of the world is going to mm-hmm. happen. It may happen. It may not happen for another thousand years. We just don't know. No one knows the day or the hour. Yeah, but we Jesus, also probably uh, shouldn't base that on our America's presidential, yes, you know, election cycle. But and but the reality of it is, Jesus said to just be ready. Mm-hmm. And how is it that we are to be ready? Well, I think it is to to live the life that He has given us in His Spirit uh, faithfully mm-hmm. to live out the kingdom of God. And and so Peter gives us, you know, seven commands in this short text of scripture to do. So I would, I would encourage you to, you know, to meditate on this passage of scripture and make these things habits in your life. Mm. Um, and so that, that's why we stepped out of John. We'll come back to John in, in a few weeks, but uh, yeah, that's where we are today. Yeah. I, I think it's really important there that what you said there, uh, these are seven commands from, mm-hmm. from Peter. This is uh, inspired text from the Holy spirit mm-hmm. written, written by Peter. Um, and so these aren't like suggestions, like these aren't like, here's some tips on how to live a more peaceful life. These are, here's what you actually are supposed to be doing as a believer. Um, so I would really encourage but, you. Yeah. I, and what you said there is interesting because we have that tendency to, you know, seven tips for a more peaceful life. Yeah. But I really think if we, if we live out the way God commands us to, you will experience well, sure, peace yeah. and joy, but it's not the kind of cheap mm-hmm. peace and joy that the world offers, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would really encourage you to, to go, uh, Go listen. Go listen to this sermon on on our our website on our YouTube. Uh, so anyway, let's let's get into what we're going to be discussing today. Kind of a, an offshoot of of this. One of one of your points, I, I think. Um, I don't remember which one now, but you talked about obeying authority, mm-hmm. uh, and I just wanted to kind of uh, dig into that a little bit more, um, and maybe maybe try to understand better what is authority. What is what is the purpose for authority? Like God, God obviously instituted s- certain hierarchies, and we know this is true. We, like there's bosses. You have you have a boss. You your boss usually has a boss. 
um, there's always somebody that you're answerable to who, uh, who's above you, regardless of your station. Right. Um, and so what is the purpose of authority in, in the believer's lives? And, s- and specifically, the, the authority we're talking about, um, you know, government in, in our life today. Yeah, in verse 13, he says, submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human institution. The word institution there is creature. You know, submit yourself to every human being who has a legitimate place of authority in your mm-hmm. life. And I, and I think in our culture, we've almost made a virtue of rebellion against yeah. authority, uh, kind of thumbing your nose at the man, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't think that's healthy. I don't think it's godly, and I don't think it's biblical. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't speak up to laws and policies and positions that, that are wrong or that don't match the scriptural idea that we don't agree with. Uh, that's part of, of being in a democratic republic is that we as the people have the right to speak into our governance. You know, we have the right to elect our, lecture, our, our leaders. And so that's a gift from God. But, but once those leaders are, have been elected, then we have a responsibility to submit to them mm-hmm. as our authority. Um, in Romans 13, Scripture is very clear that God has instituted governmental authority for the flourishing of human society. Yeah. It doesn't mean that all human authority is, is done perfectly. It doesn't mean that all governments are done perfectly. Many of them are done horribly. And people don't flourish. They suffer immeasurably underneath uh, sinful, selfish human beings. Mm. And so, uh, but that doesn't mean that authority in and of itself is bad. The authorities that exist in this world are a reflection of the ultimate and true authority that God has over all that exists. Um, And so God has instituted authority structures, whether it's governmental authority, authority in the the family. Parents have authority over their children. Mm -hmm. And one of the most fundamental commands that God gives to his children and to students, teenagers, yeah. is to obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And, and, and I think this idea that, that parents don't have a authority over their children, that we have to kind of just coax them into doing right, it's, it's wrong. The scripture is very clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, if children want to be pleasing unto the Lord, it begins by doing what mom and dad say. Yeah. And so, um, but obedience to somebody really chafes. Because... Mm. You have to acknowledge by your submission that this individual has authority over you, that you are, you are, you are voluntarily placing yourself under their will to an extent. And so um, that really bothers our highly individualistic yeah. society. Yeah, and that's, that's not always the case in, in other countries. Like It seems like mm-hmm. uh, in the West uh, specifically, we, we, we have this individualism, we have this... Um, I mean, sort of the God of our age is the God of self. We, mm-hmm. you know, we want our own autonomy, yep. our, our freedom um, in all respects. And yep. whenever somebody comes to sort of step on that, it, it causes a lot of issues, mm-hmm. um, causes us to react a certain way. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, we were talking about this a little bit before, but, but I slip into that a little bit. Um, it's very easy to do, you know, mm-hmm. that, that's like, um, don't tread on me type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know, it's very easy, easy for me to slip into that kind of, that mm-hmm. kind of mindset. Um, but I, I don't necessarily think that that's good or right, because like you said, God has instituted authorities, uh, for good. They're, they're supposed mm-hmm. to wield the sword for righteous, mm-hmm. uh, righteous purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so w- one thing you mentioned as you were talking was, um, you know, just because we're submitting to authorities doesn't mean we can't speak up against certain laws or certain uh, propositions. And so how, how do we do that respectfully? And because, uh, you know, P- Peter says to, to respect all people. So how do we do this uh, in, in a Christian way? Yeah, and it's not just that Americans that have that privilege or that responsibility. Like if you go all the way back to the first century church, mm-hmm. when they began to be persecuted heavily uh, for being Christian, the, the leaders of the churches would protest that in the sense that they would write letters to their governing authorities. They would argue their case um, that this is wrong, that it should be stopped, that this kind of behavior towards Christians is, is, is just morally wrong and, and should not be happening. Um, the, the Roman leaders didn't always listen to them. You know, they, they oftentimes killed them anyway. Um, and what is interesting is they argued forcefully but graciously, yeah. right? There's a, there's a difference between being angry and hostile and hateful and demeaning and condescending. They didn't act like that. 
They argued clearly. They argued biblically. They argued cogently. Um, but at the end of the day, if their argument failed to persuade the government, they died mm-hmm. for their faith because they, they chose to be faithful to the Lord, even though it meant death. And I think for some of us is in, in our current society, we, we argue, 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 but we're arguing not from the rightness of it, but from a fear of the consequence of failing to win the argument. Mm. We don't want to suffer. And the very idea of suffering is so repugnant to us that we become hostile. We're almost like backed into a corner and we're fighting to get, to get out of that corner. And I think that's, that's a difference that you see in the ancient Christian and, and the modern Christian, or even modern Christians in other parts of the world that are suffering for their faith. Mm-hmm. They live in, in a country that is uh, very heavily Hindu or very heavily Muslim, uh, and it is against the law to, to be a Christian or to convert from one religion to the other. Um, and they face persecution for that. Yeah. So um, I, think, I think we as Christians have to speak up in, in legitimate ways, whether that's you know, you know, running for office ourselves mm. uh, and arguing for, for a biblical uh, worldview to be established in, in our laws. And, and you know, some people have this idea, well, that, that's, we have to maintain the separation of the church and the state. I think it's a misunderstanding of that. Yeah, I agree. Everybody is arguing from a, from a spiritual, mm-hmm. theological worldview. Uh, secularism is a worldview. It's, a, it's, a, it's just as much a religious worldview as Christianity is. Um, it's a, just, just kick Christianity to the curb because it's, it, that, that's an illegitimate play. But we have to yeah. argue even for that. Mm-hmm. So, but I think we need to be running for office. I think we need to be writing articles and, and blogs. We need to be writing letters to those who are leading us and saying, this is what's happening. This, mm-hmm. is, this is wrong. This is why it's wrong. Um, but we can also appeal to the Constitution. You know, the Constitution of our country was written as kind of a, a, a groundwork from which our laws come. And if a law proves to be unconstitutional, it can be overturned, mm-hmm. as you saw with Roe v. Wade. So th- there are things that, that we can do and we should do as Christians. But the, the demeanor with which we do it matters. Yeah. We, we should put away all anger and all malice and all rancor and mm-hmm. all hostility and, and all pride and all condescension, all, all of that. It needs to be put away. We need to be a people who are kind and gracious and patient and gentle. The, the very nature and personality of Jesus should be seen mm. in how we respond. Jesus responded to the authorities that were wrong, but he did it with humility and graciousness. Uh, we, we must do the same. It, it, it's, it's more about the demeanor with which we do it. We, it's not that we can't speak up to these things. We should and we must, especially like on the issue of abortion where, mm. where people are being murdered. Yeah. Um, but, but how we do it matters very much. Yeah, it makes me think of uh, of John the Baptist. You know, Jesus called him the um, the greatest man in the in that age, um, and he went up to uh, was it Herod? Yeah. Was it, yeah, yeah. He went up to Herod, and there, it wasn't even like a policy or whatever that, that Herod had. He was just living sinfully. <laughs> yeah, John, yeah. He called you know, him out on it. Called him out. He died for it. Yeah. So uh, that that's another that's that's I think the difference is we're not willing to die. Mm. We're not willing to go to jail. Mm. We're not willing to be canceled by our culture for, for truth. Yeah. Um, we're not courageous enough to speak the truth into the darkness yeah. and face the consequence for it. And I think that there's two reactions that, that Christians have, and, and I think you've addressed the one where um, the, the rebellious spirit and this anger, this angst, the other one is, is I mean, I, I guess you did address them both, but the other one is people, Christians who just stick their head in the sand. Huh. Uh, and, well, you know, or... I don't know. It's almost a fatalism. What yeah, it be, what yeah. it be. Yeah, and, and I don't think that's right either. I don't think it's biblical either. The, the Lord, throughout the scripture, talks about how we have the responsibility to act, mm-hmm. to do, uh, and, and life is affected by our choices. Like it, it, We're not robots. There's yeah. nowhere in the scripture you find something like that. Fatalism is not biblical providence. We do serve a sovereign God who oversees all of creation, but human action we're actually making choices that God is actually responding to us in real ways, and <clears throat> and our choices matter, and we're held mm-hmm. accountable for those choices because we're doing what we want to do. And so, um, we can't just stick our heads in the sand. We've been given a gift 
to mm-hmm. live in a country where we can have a voice. And we yeah. can vote on these things and we should be educated voters and we should be regular voters. We should be practicing this kind of governance that we have. We are a, a self-governing nation. So mm-hmm. Christians should be speaking into that, should be voting into that. Um, but with the recognition that that if 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 everything goes south for us, the world does not end because mm. the the Christian worldview didn't hold sway in the American right. government. Yeah. Uh, American government may last and it may not last. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I hope. It, I I love being an American. I love this country. There's nowhere else I would rather live. Uh, but our primary loyalty is to the kingdom of God. Yeah. And 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 Jesus wins. Mm. All the all the governments of this world end up in the dustbin of history. Mm. All of them. The only the only kingdom that lasts into eternity that will never be conquered is the kingdom of Christ. Mm. And that kingdom is currently growing. Yeah. That's good. This 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 topic kind of reminds me of that uh the I am series that we did a while mm. back now. Uh, whenever Andy preached on oh gosh, maybe maybe I got that wrong. Um, Andy preached on um, the meekness of Christ. Maybe that wasn't in the I am. I don't remember. Anyway, he preached on on Christ's meekness and, and what meekness meant. And mm-hmm. you know, we talked about how sometimes we get this idea that meekness means uh, passivity or mm-hmm. um, or, or weakness, uh, but really it's not. It's using God's uh, authority or God's power for good, uh, mm-hmm. for the good of those around you, and yeah. and and the glory of God. And so that's that's what we're talking about. We want to yeah. we want to. Um, uh, exemplify Christ in that way, and, uh, and and be meek in that way. Um, and so, be, as as we kind of wrap this episode up, uh, I wanted to move into uh, asking you how how do we respond to uh, authorities who um, maybe they they are either living in in such a way or, or or ruling in such a way that's contrary to God's word, like we saw with with Herod, and you know John the Baptist spoke up against him, or even a step further. Uh, they're commanding, making laws that go directly against the scripture. What do we do as Christians in, in, in that kind of situation? Well, I mean, the, the, the example of Peter and John, when they were brought before the Sanhedrin, mm-hmm. and they were told to stop preaching in the name of Christ um, because it was causing an uproar in the city. And they said, well, you're going to have to be the judge on whether or not that's, you know, because we, we can't stop mm-hmm. doing what God has commanded us to do. Uh, so that's between you and God is basically what they were saying, and and they were they were going to continue preaching even if it meant they were going to be beaten and jailed for it because they valued obedience to God more than their own lives. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are going to be times when human governments uh, will command you to do something that you simply cannot do because of your faithfulness to Jesus, and in that case we we are faithful to Jesus and we endure the consequences for it. Um, but there's a lot of things that I don't think rise to that level. Yeah. I think it's things we just don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't like the speed limit. Well, that doesn't mean <laughs> you can just break the speed limit law because you don't like it or you think it should be faster than it is. I mean, that, that seems like a, uh, a small, silly thing, but, but it really is a, it's yeah. a law. So if, if, if we're going to be obedient citizens of the country, you should be obedient in the ordinary, boring things mm. and not just break laws willy nilly because we just don't like them like that that's wrong we the, the scriptures commands us to submit ourselves to those who govern us so long as they're not commanding us to sin against the lord um so i, I think that's a, that's a part of it I, I think another part we have to honor them to show them respect and i think that's where we as christians are failing a lot we are very disrespectful to people we disagree mm. with and that's not just christian i mean that's this the american society yeah we are very very disrespectful yeah, to people. It's, it's extremely we, polarized. Yes. Every, every, it, it, it's character assassination. It's humiliation, mockery. Um, and, and I don't think that's where Christians should be. As mm-hmm. followers of Jesus, um, I don't think that's what we should be doing. I think we should be using our tongues to build up, not to tear down. Um, does that mean we shouldn't speak up against their... No, we should speak up against yeah. policies. Uh, but we can do that without mocking and mm-hmm. ridiculing and shaming and um, disrespecting them. We are, we are to treat them as image bearers of God. Mm. Treat them how we would want to be treated if we were them. And it, it is it is by goodness that evil is overcome. 
we don't overcome evil with evil we overcome evil with good um that makes sense yeah i mean i mean think about what happened in um you know whenever persecution came to jerusalem and um certainly the the christians didn't just bow their knee to uh, to to nero or or to whoever i guess i don't might not have been nero at the time anyway they didn't bow, bow their knee to the emperor um but they were persecuted and scattered abroad and then what happened the church flourished i mean many people were were killed and and martyred uh, and the church grew and god's kingdom expanded and and so god works in in these kinds of ways um you know not not saying that we're exactly facing that right that level of persecution right now Mm -hmm. um but it might get to that point you know someday um and so i think that we just have to be have to be ready uh like you said earlier to um to actually die for for what we believe in um, and I also think it's important that, that you, you kind of made the distinction between what, what is, uh, what, what, you know, a policy that is actually, um, a, you know, anti-biblical versus mm-hmm. a policy that's, you know, against my personal preferences. Yeah. Um, sometimes we, ha- we put our personal preferences on bar with scripture, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and that can cause us to get into this because then, then it's at that point that we're, we're fighting for our identity, which we think is. Yep. It's biblical as scripture, and, and so we're fighting for Christ when really we're just kind of being deterred for our own, our own personal preferences. Um, and that, that, I think that causes a lot of, a lot of um, hatred, like especially on, on Twitter. I've, I've talked to you about my Twitter experiences before, uh, and, and this year has been um, pretty insane with the discussions happening yeah. um, because people, people have this idea that, that they they have uh, complete autonomy. There is no authority um, over me because God is my ultimate, ultimate authority. And it's, it's completely n- n- nonsensical to think like yeah, that. It's not, it's not what the scripture says. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you have to be very careful with that kind of thing. Uh, th- this is some gray area. Mm. Like We have to submit to legitimate authority mm. um, so long until that authority says, to, you know, to do something that God has commanded us right. not to do, or something. Um, so, but when we have, when we, when we have to go against that authority, we should do so from humility mm-hmm. and gentleness, and a willingness to embrace the suffering for the glory of Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also noting that you're submitting yourself to Scripture's authority, not your own, yeah. Yeah. your own preferences. Um, and so, I guess as as we close, um, I would just encourage you to to pray for wisdom as as the election approaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, pray that God would help you to discern what is biblical versus what is your personal preference. Um, not that we can't fight for our personal preferences. You know, we, we've been given yeah, freedom to do so, and so we should speak up. But what yeah. I'm saying is, uh, there's a difference be- between you know disobeying the government over scriptural matters and disobeying the government over personal yeah. preferences. Yep. Um, so just pray, pray for wisdom in that area. Uh, Phil, do you have anything else to, to add as we, we wrap this one up? I would just close with verse 16. Act as free men mm. and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil. Yeah, that's but good. But use it as bond slaves of God. And I think that's very important. Yeah. We cannot use our freedom as a covering for evil. Mm-hmm. We are slaves of Christ. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's, that's a good place to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for listening. We hope that you enjoyed this and, and found it helpful. Uh, you know, we hope that, that you find these next few podcast helpful uh, pray for us as we uh, discuss this super uncontroversial topic of <laughs> politics and, and faith yeah. and how those go together uh, but yeah until next week keep following jesus Thanks again for tuning in to following. We truly hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did enjoy this episode, we'd ask that you go and hit that follow button and share this podcast with your friends and your family. If you'd like to hear more on this text, visit the link in the description and you can watch or listen to this sermon on this text. For more resources like this, go to hopeformacon.com. Until next week, keep following Jesus.